This is KT Bradford with Laptop Magazine, and we are here at the Google Android Honeycomb event, um, and we're taking a look at the Motorola Zoom, which is going to be the first tablet that has Honeycomb on it. It's going to be coming out maybe about a month, and so we're just going to take you through some of the cool stuff that Google showed us today. So this is the home screen for Honeycomb, and uh, just trying to get out of the glare of the lights. And um, we really like what Android has done with the home screen. Basically, not only do you have you know some really cool widgets, you also have just like more space and they've actually optimized this space pretty well. So I'm going to have Billy here, who is uh, with the Android developer uh, relations, relations yeah. team, uh, <laughs> like walk us through just some of the features of the home screens first. So how many home screens does this device have? Yeah, how many sure. home screens Honeycomb so, have? So your starting point when you unlock the device is uh, the main home screen. And if you swipe left and right, you can see that I'm slowly changing between multiple home screens. Uh, and there's five of them by default on, on the Motorola Zoom. So this one's actually, actually empty. Um, if you go back to the main one, you can see that we've added a few things to it. So users can customize the home screen by adding launcher icons as well as widgets. Okay. And launcher icons are exactly what it sounds like. You, you touch the icons to launch the application. Mm -hmm. And if I go back to the home screen, uh, this is an example of a widget. And with the widget, you're actually getting information from the application itself without launching the application. Okay. So think of the user building sort of their own uh, personalized newspaper or home screen uh, by adding you know, any number of widgets. Uh, and third-party developers can create their own widget that represent their brand, that represent their information. Okay. And users can add those widgets to the home screen. So what we're showing here are two of our own widgets, one from Google Calendar. So I can see my uh, calendar of events for the day, and kind of scroll through those. Mm -hmm. And then I can see my email. Uh, and what's neat about this is these run uh, in the foreground, so maybe I have my tablet docked um, and I can just see updates as they come in. Right. And the widgets are constantly updated, and then I can just touch to interact if I decide that's something I want to pay closer attention to. And is adding widget, widget, widgets pretty much the same as on uh, Android 2.2, uh, 2.3, 2 2 etc.? Yeah, it's exactly the same idea as adding widgets to your phone home okay. screen. Uh, it's just larger and it's more robust. And in this uh, in this version of Android, we have sort of the um, the, the hardware accelerate hardware accelerated 3D graphics that let us interact with the widget uh, in a very smooth and fluid way. Okay, cool. And what other widgets can you get like that come with these apps? Uh, well, there's a lot. And as I said, uh, with each third-party application you install, they have the ability to offer their own widget. Okay. But another good example coming from uh, Google is the YouTube widget, uh -huh. which I have here on this home screen. And uh, you can see that it's kind of uh, has this waterfall effect rolling through the latest. Uh, popular um, clips on YouTube. Oh, cool. And as you swipe it there, you're actually rolling through those. And when you get, um, can you personalize it, like say have a playlist or, or ones from your favorite people that you follow on YouTube? Uh, it's, it's possible, but in this version, we haven't put that logic into it, but the developer could certainly add that, so you could configure the widget okay. uh, as you'd like. Now, uh, earlier you showed us what it, uh, how you put uh, your own icons on the home screen, and so I just wanted you to have that yeah, yeah, demo sure. that. So if I uh, just click here where we have have um, the collection of apps that are installed on the device in the upper right corner. You can see that all the icons are presented to you here. And if we had more apps installed, I could swipe left and right and just kind of page through all those icons. Mm -hmm. If you see something here that you would want to add to your home screen, uh, for example, if we wanted to add uh, the camera, I could just choose that icon, hold it for just about a half second, and you see at the bottom we see all five home screens light up. Nice. And I can drop this on any of those home screens. For example, here, uh, and you can see that I've already added the camera once. Uh, so if I, if I go back to that home screen, uh, you can see there's two icons for there the camera. And then to remove it, uh, you know, maybe you didn't mean to put that there. You can drop it here in the in the trash can to remove it. Uh, and as you press and hold a widget or an icon, you can see the small grid kind of light up in the background. Maybe it's hard to see here. Oh, yes, I it see it, It indicates yeah. to the user where they can drop uh, any of the targets that can land on the home screen. Nice. Um, so a lot of what they talked about in the demo was fragments. So can we see an app that has an example, a really good example yeah, of fragments? Yeah, absolutely. So I think Gmail is a really good example of that. So if we launch Gmail, and if I start off here in my uh, inbox, you can see really two main fragments. The one on the left uh, is my inbox and labels for my Gmail account, and I can I can scroll through those. But unfortunately, there's there's not enough to scroll here, so it's kind of flat. Okay. Uh, and then my messages here on the right, representing my inbox. Now, if I were to open one of these messages, you'll see that the left uh, the left fragment slides out, and uh, this slides over, and I can see the contents of the message. So nice. you can see that there. And here is an example of uh, this fragment scrolling. And these fragments are really just um, user experience building blocks, so developers can build their app into these sort of uh, components that can be constructed together for an overall uh, compelling experience for the, the largest screen of the tablet. Right. 
And I um, wanted to do a quick demo also of the Android Market because that's another example sure, of a yeah. really good fragment. So if we open up Market, this is uh, Android Market for the tablet on Honeycomb. Okay. And you can see uh, in the upper portion, it's automatically scrolling now, but if I if I swipe on it, uh, you can see that these are the featured apps. Uh huh. This is one horizontal fragment that's been added to the application. Uh, below that, we have uh, another fragment that lists uh, applications by category. So, for example, the top three and the best selling. And the user can just kind of scroll through those independently of the upper fragment for the featured apps. Mm -hmm. And then on the right hand side, we have uh, categories uh, in its own fragment. So, this is a case where our visual design team thought three fragments would represent the, the information better to the user than just two, like okay. we did on Gmail. So, and, they can create as many fragments as they like to, to, to build out the design. Now, are any of these concepts going to be made? making it into the smartphone versions of Android, or is this strictly for tablets? Yeah, that's, so that's, that's a common question we've been be getting a lot <laughs> today, is uh, you know, when is Honeycomb coming to phones? And, and the short answer is that today we're talking about Honeycomb for tablets, okay. but everything you see here represents the future of Android. Okay, all right, great. Um, let's just have a quick look, visual look at some of the other apps. Uh, the yeah. music app is really nicely designed. The music app is beautiful, so we're announcing that today as well. So if I go back to the, the home of the music, it's, it's, it's a more interesting starting point, uh, so I can see all all the um, all the albums that I have loaded on this device, mm -hmm. and I can just scroll through them here. And this is another great example of the, the fluid hardware acceleration and, and 3D graphics capability of the device. Very nice. So if I uh, just kind of roll through these and just pick anything at random. Uh, and lets you go in, see the uh, contents of the album, choose a song, and then you can just uh, invoke the player here. Nice. Yeah. Now, one thing that you'll notice is if I exit out of this and go back to the home screen, mm -hmm. I have an icon in the system tray. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a set of headphones. If I touch the headphones, you get a notification that pops up indicating what's playing in the background, mm -hmm. and I can interact with that application uh, just by touching the notification so I can pause or maybe go to the next track. And what's nice here is uh, I think users are used to seeing system notifications, right. uh, however, they're not used to interacting with the notification itself, normally they would go into the application, you know, hit the next song or pause it, and then uh -huh. come back out of it, so it's a convenience mechanism. What does the notification tray look like in general? Uh, it's just here. Uh, as you as you receive more notifications, they'll, they'll stack up, okay. and you can dismiss them by clicking the X. Okay, so you can dismiss them one at a time. Yeah, exactly. I only have one in this case. Okay. Yeah. What about the books application? I know that was a big sure, thing when yeah. they launched that. Yeah, so the books application is here. Uh, another good example of the, the 3D capabilities and hardware acceleration. So this is my collection of books. I only have uh, a couple here. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you go into one of them, for example, uh, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, uh, I can just kind of scroll through the pages of the book here. And you can see the very smooth scrolling uh, through the hardware accelerated graphics as well. And all of these apps have been designed for both portrait and landscape mode, correct? That's correct. So if I tip the device over into um, portrait mode, it'll update itself and show you that page. Uh, and, you know, the same the same capabilities are offered there. Mm -hmm. And when you have uh, fragments, how does portrait landscape mode differ? Yeah, so that's really up to the designer. And okay. that's, that's another reason why we have fragments, because in one case, um, let, me, let me go back to Android Market for a second. So the, uh, the developer of the application may want to give the user a different experience in landscape versus portrait. So here we're using three fragments in this configuration. Right. If I kick the device up into portrait mode, you'll see that it redraws itself. And maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Maybe we're still working on that. Okay. But it would, it would draw itself differently and present a different set of fragments in a different configuration. Uh, and that's really the point of using fragments, so that you can re, uh, rebuild the application in a different visual mode. Okay. That sounds really great. Well, is there anything else that's that's special about Honeycomb um, that you want to show us? Really just the, the processing power, uh, the larger screen, uh, the 3D graphics and hardware acceleration, and of course the great Google Apps uh, bundled with it. Cool, great. Well, thank you so much, Billy. Absolutely. This is uh, Casey Bradford here at the Android preview event for Honeycomb. I'm looking at the Motorola Zoom.